This problem is pretty typical of trusses used in crates. The problem as shown involves six cells. Each cell is of size 2a by 8 so that all the angles in the cell are either 45 or 90 degrees. I would like to analyze a general case where the total number of cells is equal to 2n. So I have n cells on each side. I consider the load induced by three forces, P, 2P, and P. My task is to determine the forces in the central unit, as shown here in green, in terms of prescribed P, A, H, and N. I begin solving this problem by writing down equilibrium equations for the free body for the entire truss. In writing this equation, I want to point out that some of the moments about A involves four terms. For the force 2P, the arm is equal to A times M. And that's reflected here. For this force, the arm is A times N minus 1. And for this force, it is A N plus 1. And uh, for the force BY, the arm is 2 N A. Of course, once we solve these equations, we obtain that the force AX is equal to zero and the forces AY and BY each equal to 2P simply because they share the total load of 4P. So all dependence on N disappears, which is again expected. Next, let me consider the following cut shown in yellow, so that the free body diagram associated with this cut looks like this. So the cut exposes the forces T1, T2, T3, T4, plus it includes the reaction force at A and the applied load at P. If I write down some of the forces on X, some of the forces on Y, and some of the moments about the point C, I can calculate the forces T1 and T4, which follow from the first and third equations. And then I can find that the forces T2 and T3 satisfy this condition. I should not be surprised that I cannot determine all the forces, simply because I started with a free body diagram with four unknowns, and I wrote three equations. As a result, I determined two unknowns, and the remaining two are related, but we don't know them individually. Let me exploit the symmetry of the problem and draw the free body diagram for the central unit. Here we are. It involves compression at the top, tension at the bottom, and then the vertical bars are subjected to the forces T2 and T3 as shown, and of course this free body diagram reflects symmetry. Now what I can do I can use the previously derived condition, which states that T2 minus T3 equal to P. And I can look at the free body diagram that involves the joints. All right, so I remove the bars, and these two forces cancel each other out, these two forces cancel each other out, and this condition allows me to replace 
the forces T2 and T3 simply by the force P. And that's how the free body diagram for the forces acting at the joints look like. Now I'm ready to analyze this unit. First, I will start with the free body diagram that involves a side node. So both forces are shown as tensions. And if I analyze the force equilibrium equation, I obtain that the force T5 is compression and the force T6 is tension. And the magnitude of both forces is square root of 2 over 2. Next, I will analyze the joint uh, at the top and I know that these two bars are in compression. I have determined the force in this bar. The force in this bar follows from symmetry. The middle bar, I assume that it's tension. After I sum all of the forces on Y, I obtain that indeed it is tension and the magnitude equal to P. Finally, let me check quickly that my answer is correct. So what I will do, I will look at the bottom joint. I have tension here, tension here, and tension here. Everything has been predetermined. And now all I have to do is convince myself that some of the forces on X and Y is equal to zero, some of the forces on X equal to zero due to symmetry, and some of the forces on Y equal to zero if we project all the forces keep. So let me summarize how the answers look like. So here, instead of showing forces acting on the joints, I want to summarize them as showing forces acting on the bars. So the bars at the top are in compression. The bars at the bottom are in tension. Please pay attention that the tension and compression are equal and they can be quite large if M is large. So the horizontal bars must be pretty heavy to sustain long spans or large ends. In contrast, the forces in the vertical and inclined bars are not dependent on N, right? We have compression in the upper bars, tension in the lower bars, and the middle bar is in tension. So for large N, these forces remain relatively small, and again, it's a sign of a local action. As the load moves through this, there are these forces engaged that are of the order of P. Also, I want to pay your attention that the forces are not dependent on H or on how much the truss is elevated over the ground level. 